Hi folks, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine, thank all you. Right. I get the Ellie Mae Clampett thing going on. <laughs> Y'all come back now, yeah? I love it. I know. Today we're going to talk about some possible solutions to the ongoing problem of senior citizens living in poverty and not having a place to stay. We've got some homelessness going on and possibly coming up. So, we've got a lot of solutions, huh? Well, actually, oh, okay. we, we went into the past a little bit yeah. on one of these solutions, at least. And uh, you all have probably seen Forrest Gump, haven't you? Well, life is a box of chocolate. <laughs> you just never know what you're going to get. <laughs> That's right. Um, mm. But do you remember what his mother did? She actually rented rooms in their home. Yes, a boarding house. Yeah, and Elvis Presley stayed there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Forrest Gump taught him how to dance. Remember that one? I don't remember that part. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. And But first, but first, let's, we'll get to uh, but this. But first. Yeah, so I'm going to do a shout out to Mary Lou. Well, hello, Mary Lou. She get, aren't you gonna say goodbye, it? <laughs> heart, sweet Mary Lou? I'm so in love with you. Yes. Well, she gave me a little present, but I just wanted to do a shout out. I met her today, and she said she watched one of my videos, and she loved it. She subscribed, and she thought this would be cute for my minivan. It's got a little. It is. In it. I know. Thank you, Mary Lou. And, oh, look, it's a little pot. Pot it's holder, a, huh? Oh my gosh. This is so cool. She thought of everything. I know it. Uh, <laughs> they're traveling. Her and her husband are traveling in a class A. And uh, she's just delightful. So thank you, Mary Lou. I love it. Yeah, that's very yes. cool. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Mary Lou yet, but yes. I bet one of these days I will very one shortly. One of these days, yes. And her husband's from Tucson, too. Oh. There you go. There you go. Okay, boarding houses, the big BHs. Yeah. Yeah, they've they've kind of, as far as we know, they've kind of gone by the wayside, and part oh, of that yeah. may be to uh, zoning and regulations and all of this kind yeah. of stuff. Maybe. Yeah. But don't you think that might be one thing that people could look into? I know. Uh, I do. Well, they seem really cool because usually they were fam in the past. They were family homes. And um, they did laundry, and they did cleaning, and then they all had that meeting place, and they usually had, like, supper or dinner, just whatever one, you want to call it. Just the one meal a day. Just the one meal a day. Okay. So I, but I bet some of them maybe provided, like, breakfast and lunch. I don't know. But they probably maybe, like, coffee in the morning, and then people would go about their business, and then they come back, and they would all have have a dinner together mm. and so the the owner of the home actually did the cooking maybe she brought in help for that that um portion of the day mm. and somebody would clean so i think a revival of the boarding house might be a really cool idea i think it has merit i do too um they with the boarding house i looked it up and there was a light they had a license to use the room but the owner retained all rights to access. Um, nowadays, you would probably need to have a good application going, um, maybe a background check, because they're going to be living in, in your house, really. Right. Yeah. But that would be more to uh, or at the discretion of the homeowner, right? Exactly. Or the exactly. landlord, if you want to call them that. So if there was any misbehavior they came in drunk or there were drug use things like that or they were just loud and obnoxious can you imagine having somebody loud and obnoxious in your in your house well and just playing music too loud oh yeah who knows well you know. elvis probably played music didn't he well he certainly did I don't think <laughs> <laughs> you I don't got think that right they didn't have headphones back then but he was just playing guitar right right, right. but anyways yeah um, and this was common throughout the 19th century all the way to the 1950s. Now, it's interesting with Boston. 
Boston? Boston. Boston. Yes. Yes. They, it was very, very common in Boston uh, in like the 19, or not 19, 1830s. They say that one third to one half of the residents of Boston stayed in a boarding house. Yes. Pretty cool. Because it made it possible for people in smaller, like up in the hills or in smaller places, um, to actually move to a big city. And because they were leaving friends and family and they could find better work back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. And they didn't feel like they were so alone. So boarding houses were very popular. And a lot of people were, were moving to big cities back then. And I think uh, it might be uh, truthful to say that it must have been a good place to write. Yes, because, because <laughs> Walt Whitman and don't they make Whitman chocolates or something too? Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I digress. Yeah. Walt Whitman and Edgar Allan Poe are famous boarding house renters. Yes, they were. They lived. They spent a lot of time in boarding houses. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they were in big cities, but so. like I said, in the 1960s, the whole thing kind of fell apart. Well, some of the boarding houses were getting older, and they didn't really um, uh, build them anymore. And the, probably single family homes were going on right. back then. And yeah, so the from the boarding house came the concept of single. What was it called? Single room occupancy. And what they did there, they had a shared ba bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then they had these rooms. So it's sort of, it was sort of like a boarding house, but I don't think there were any, um, with with that, there's no meals going on, things like that. Right, I, right. Yeah. So, so what, now in, in okay. a boarding house, excuse me, yeah. the, they would normally uh, fix one meal a day, and mm -hmm. have, maybe have coffee yes. ready, a big pot of coffee ready to go in the morning. Yeah. But then the rest of the day, it was do what you will. If you had right. to go off to work, if you wanted to go to right. a uh, yeah. recreational thing of some kind, you just did your own thing. Mm -hmm. I I think that has some merit myself. I do uh, too. I mean, we could always revive it just like if they fell apart, we could bring them back again. I mean, we would have to update the... Um, the whole theory of it just a little bit for our age because there would have to be more um, background checks credit checks possibly right, right. and more um, I don't know if before in the in the boarding houses I don't know if they had contracts but there would definitely have to be contracts right yeah right right and then something very similar to that I believe they are called pods Oh, yeah. Where you don't even have a room to really, you can't call it a room. Right. Can you? It's a pod. And I know these are very popular in Japan. Uh, you have a, 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 a box, if you will. Yeah. You can, there's enough room for a bed to sleep in in there and, you know, uh, room to store suitcase or your clothing and so forth. Well, along the wall, you have these. Um Cubby cubbies, holes or cubbies, something? Cubbies, yeah. <laughs> Where you can, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's not much, but maybe for some people, I'm thinking of perhaps the younger homeless or uh, people that, that are working and have some yeah. discretionary funds to spend. It might be something that would work. It, to my way of thinking, it's much better than living on the sidewalk on the street. I think it'd be great for um, seniors. Yeah. Well, I know that you probably on the some of that they're they're like I think they're three stack three or four, not four but probably three or maybe two three, but you'd have to have a ladder, mm -hmm. um, to get into it. It's like a bunk bed kind of. Well, I figured uh, the pod is actually about the size of my minivan. Okay, as far as the or, space at least available. so living not not considering this cab area in the front, but I bet. You know, yeah. yeah. I think it's, a, I wouldn't mind it. And then there's a common area to where you can either close your door to the pod. There must be, I think there might be curtains, but I'm not sure. I think I'd rather have a door on it because there are people that snore. You know? <laughs> I don't know if I'd want yeah. that. But you would, if there's a common area right outside where uh, there's a couch where you can 
um, join in in games or just playing cards or just reading. And then you also have a kitchen, a common kitchen, and then a bathroom area. But you have, they're called pods, and they're popular um, here and there in California also. Mm. And it seems to be a younger person thing, but I would be up for it. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool. And they're also in Japan, I think they're popular also in uh, airports. Like if you're traveling, oh, you yeah. can stop and just go in. You can rent one, go in and get some sleep, get some rest. Yeah. Great, great. So I think that's a great idea. And as far as, as the the uh, senior citizens that might uh, be using this kind of thing, yeah. at least there are other people around. Should there right. be a medical emergency, I'm right. thinking, something like that, at least someone uh, that could check on you once right. in a while. Right. Well, they, everybody, I don't think there needs to be a nurse. or A lot of us don't need nurses. I mean, there's um, right. 911 and then you take it, you know. Yep. I mean, just because we're seniors doesn't mean we have to have a nurse around us. <laughs> that would true. be sad. Very I true. know. Yeah. yeah. So that's our number one idea. The boarding house, which today almost is like a pod, but I don't see anything wrong with boarding houses. No, yeah. I don't either. Next idea is actually my idea. I've had this idea for quite a while, years actually. It's called a referral service, a national referral service. Um, and the concept is referring people to come and share your home like for senior citizens, let's say scenario, uh, your spouse passed away and you're living in this house all by yourself. Um, it might be paid for, it might not be, but you would really rather have it shared with somebody or maybe two people. Well, there could be a referral service, sort of like, I'm, I'm thinking match.com. I mean, sure. the yeah. whole concept has already been there, the software yeah. of like you fill out an application and then you kind of match people that might, you know, would be suited for each other living together. Right. Because if you're senior, it might be, your house might be paid for, but still you've got these repairs coming up in your house. I mean, who wants to let their house go? You know, it might need, it needs to be painted. There might be a new roof, a water heater, a uh, you know, central air, things like that, that can be really expensive. So, and then you don't have to be lonely in your home. And if you've got two or three bedrooms, you've got some extra space that you could rent out a room. But how do you find somebody to rent a room? Well, one of the things that I thought was a great idea that you mentioned what? was getting two people together to talk to each other on... Uh, I, I was going to say Facebook. It's not Facebook. What to FaceTime? FaceTime, sure. Uh, or well, there's or, Google Duo or something like that. There's um, my or, daughter or, and I. Or Zoom. Or Zoom, right? So here's the concept. You would have contacts. You'd want to take your your concept to an attorney so that you could get everything down the way like a contract. You and it, you could have like um, background checks and credit checks if you wanted that, but you would probably have to pay for that. But in the long run, if you can find somebody really cool to live with and they all agree to whatever you and your attorney want to get the paperwork mm -hmm. together, I would definitely suggest get an attorney to, to get everything together. Absolutely. It's just a one-time fee. You're going to do it and you're going to actually have, um, you know, somebody as, as if this is your referral service, you're going to, you don't, need to keep running to an attorney all the time. This is one time fee to get everything together so that you can offer this to people. Right. And then the person who wants to rent out their home, wants to join this and then become a member, then um, they pay a small fee. And then if you want to, and you're looking for a home to share with somebody, then it could be a small fee for them too. Mm -hmm. And then you could get matched up with the right people. I just think it's it's a nice. It would be a good business to get into. And of course, they wouldn't have to charge the extraordinary uh, high prices right. of a regular apartment or right. anything like that. Uh, I mean, you you'd want to make it reasonable, and it could. I think it could be done. Uh, right. The only thing is, how do you find these people? Well, that's where that's, the referral. Uh, that's where you come in. Referral right. central, if you will, right. comes in. 
Well, and just like on Match.com, I mean, they're not responsible for people that are going to date. Right. Right. And it's same with you. You have a you would have a disclaimer that it's up to you on who you rent, you know, rent your rooms to. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a boarding house, but just a little bit different. Right, right, right. So it may just be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Right. The homeowner and the the person that right rents. Yes. Uh, rather than a boarding house would have many renters. Right. So. Well, if you wanted a background check run, you would probably need to pay for that. And maybe you could, refer, you know, maybe yeah. suggest somebody in the area um, that you could do a background check with. And the person renting might want to do a background check on the on the person well, that's who rent, knows? Who's yeah. the renter. Yeah. You you don't want you don't yeah. want to you want to make sure that that person is not Nurse Ratchet or anything. <laughs> right. You know. Or, or, yeah. Was that her name? Um, Nurse Ratchet, yeah. Miss we, Ratchet. We were, yeah. Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. We were talking about that today. Um, we mentioned something about a nurse, and I said, oh, it sounds like Nurse yeah, Ratchet. You, yeah. So Why is Lower the Cuckoo's Nest? So there would be something to uh, uh, yeah. check out for people on both sides of the table. Yeah. And it could be good for everyone. Oh, it could just all be done. It could be done. Everything is possible. But it is an idea. And I've had this idea up here for quite a while that it's just referral service. It's like a babysitting referral service. I mean, how do you know you're gonna leave your kids somewhere? Yeah. You know, if you're gonna leave your kids at a, at a at like somebody's home, you would rather have like, for kids it's a baby, you'd rather have home care for that person, you go with a referral service and mm -hmm. they find you, you know, in that city. Right. There's some good babysitting referral services. Yeah. It's the same thing. The referral service is not responsible. You know, mm -hmm. they have an application thing and it's up to you, you know, yeah. But this is a lot less um, risky than, you know, than putting your baby in a home or something right. like that. Right. So, so yeah. that's our second idea. Yeah. yeah. Now, the third idea was actually uh, brought to us by Danny on a comment on the last video, I believe. And that is the Escapees RV Club offers a care center in Livingston, Texas. And this would be a place that would provide a safe haven for members whose travels are impacted because of age or health problems or whatever. You can actually live in your own RV at this care center. And therefore, you're surrounded by like-minded people that, yeah. that love RVing. Uh, it's it's like an RV yeah. park, obviously. But they do have a place where you can stay. They have a room available. And even if you're in your, you stay, I read about it, even if you stay in your own RV, you still have place inside where you can um, uh, keep some of your stuff in there. And they offer laundry. They offer, um, what else do they Free offer? Free transportation. Right. Uh, like once a week going to the store yeah games socializing right they have outings yeah and i think what they call it uh, there is an acronym care and that is continuing assistance for retired escapees right which is pretty cool i think so too uh they're supposed to be uh, we didn't fill out the form you have to do yeah. that to get the pricing but it's supposed to be affordable well, it's a non-profit organization. Right, right. And if you like to volunteer, they are looking for volunteers to go there and help, help right, out. Right. Yeah, isn't that cool? It is like pretty it. cool. I think so too. So, Danny, thank you. Th yes. There are things out there that yes. are available. I know already. Well, their goal is to delay or eliminate the need for a nursing home or assisted living. Which, as you know, yeah. many of you, uh, most of you. Yeah is much 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 more expensive to go into a nursing home or assisted yeah. living yeah rather than something like this program yeah. so now you say well i'm not an escapee <laughs> you know i haven't escaped um but he, this is an idea this could be uh uh expanded upon in for somebody else just uh for nomads uh you know that it could be a nonprofit organization and there could be a building built or an existing building and transformed into something like that. Um, 
Actually, Lee, we yeah. have heard of more than one person who has bought acreage, whether it was, I think one was in northern New Mexico okay. uh, and other locations. Yeah. And I don't know how they've set this up exactly, but they want to get other people to join them somehow. Okay. I'm sure there's a cost involved, but they want the other people to join them and have your own little RV park, if you will, um, on the acreage that these folks have bought. So I think it's a great idea. There are some things happening out there and we just yes. have to keep our ear to the tracks, right. as they say, and find out what these things are. Well, let's say that somebody does can't afford it, you know. So in the in, in coming up, we're going to come up with another idea where we can help get some individual help. Mm -hmm. If there's a if there's a fee for it, that somebody wants to help because basically, like if you watched our last video, we have some actual real life real stories right. of people out there. And there are so many people helping them. And I don't want to say, I was going to say having to help them. Um, they want to, but it can be a burden for some of us nomads to yeah. be out there constantly running them into. I mean, we got to worry about our own, um, making sure that our own uh, vehicles stay top notch. Because right. in these days, trying you're on a waiting list to get repairs done. And uh, there's not a lot of us driving brand new vehicles. Right? True. I know. True. So there's a lot of people do, doing more than their share of trying to help out some of these um, nomads who are really, they were doing well. Well, you just need to, if you haven't, go see um, our the video right before this one, um, the dark side right. of van life. Yeah. And... And then, of course, go to the um, the very first one of this one. Yeah, the truth about van life. So there's some stark news out there. There's some yep. stark stories. But th if we could get something like this going and have them all over, I don't know. I don't know what the legality is, but I know that probably if you're going to start something like this, you would have to have the zoning. And you probably want to at least visit an attorney to see what the legalities are definitely oh yeah definitely. i mean a lot of people say oh you know oh what would you do if you won a million dollars well i know what i'd do i'd go see an attorney <laughs> he'd be the first person i would i would visit mm -hmm. and then an accountant after that but yeah you want to go see an attorney yeah they're not all horrible so yeah that's our another idea there you go okay okay number four parking lots our dear friend Felicity suggested this. Hi, yes. Felicity. Yes. And it's a great idea. Yeah. I'm going to put a kibosh on it, but it's a great idea. Well, it's already it, going on, so you well, can kibosh it all you want. Well, you know, uh, shopping kibosh. center. Kibosh. <laughs> how many times have you, other than the two weeks before Christmas, have you gone by a shopping center parking lot and it's wide open? Especially these days, it yeah. seems. <laughs> um, what what's being done with all of that space? The space is already marked off, and and uh, you know there there's you do sometimes see people that are already taking advantage of that, and I gotta believe that a lot of times if there's nothing set up, those people quite often get a knock on their window and have to leave. But why not set up something? via the shopping center owners or managers or whatever where mm -hmm. people could actually use this kind of thing from x time in the evening to x time in the morning and then they've got to be out of there i think it's a great idea and well, a why great... would they have to be out of there maybe they're shopping that's what they'll say well well i'm gonna go shopping i'm sorry and what does that hurt uh, well who who did this and who who now doesn't want to do it anymore Walmart. <laughs> Walmart's already yeah, done yeah, this. That's true. And now a lot of Walmarts don't want to let us park there anymore. What's up, Walmart? Well, the thing that I have <laughs> negatively about this is that people, if something like this becomes available, we all have to clean up after ourselves. We've been at Cracker Barrels. We've been at a Walmart or two. 
We've been to places like that, and there's a Coke can over here, and a bag of garbage, and a stuffed full garbage can here, and it looks like the devil. And if that was my property, I'd kick them all out in a minute. Yeah. Even though there's just a couple of bad apples in the group, I'm not going to go up and clean up, go out and yeah. clean up the parking lot every day. That's just or not going around, to happen. Or they walk around their dog and they don't. And they don't pick up the poop. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of people are really clean about it. Oh, sure. But there's always. Well, here's another thing too. I mean, we're seeing it. We're seeing it. They have. <laughs> They put up like, a, um, uh, what are those called? Camper tents. The slide outs. The, the no, the camper tents. The tents. The can you know the fold out campers. The, with oh, the pop up campers. The pop up. I was forgetting. Yeah, let's 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 and make sure that they put our pop ups out, put our slide ups, uh, slide outs out, and then live and there. get our chairs out <laughs> and take an another I parking. I'm sorry. I know. I, I'm just. We stay in a lot of different places, and we see a lot of different stuff. Yeah. And we, of course, are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, we clean up, but we don't that, leave messes. That was a joke. Yeah. Yes. That. Uh, <laughs> oh. Anyway, it it it's aggravating that people, in yeah. my humble opinion, take advantage yeah. of some of these places that are good enough to open up their parking lots. Yeah. Well. Let's behave ourselves, all of us. Right. And I think if we don't, they're going to go away and they won't be available any longer. Well, a lot of the people who um, are like pigs, they don't probably watch us. You know, they maybe they don't watch us. They really don't care. If they're, if they're going to be that way, they don't care. Well, or they park where they're not supposed right. to. You're probably right. We always clean up after Abby, by the way. Absolutely. We always do. I don't know most of you do out there. You clean up. If it's there, in fact, on her leash, she has one of those little holders of all the bags. Got to have it. the poop bags. I know. Mm -hmm. So, th thank you, Felicity, for that. Now, Cracker Barrel, I know Cracker Barrel, in most cities, you can stay there. Also, Bass Pro Shops. Bass Pro Shops right. is a great place to be. And I know that if you go in and ask a Home Depot, they probably will let you. I understand some do. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go in and ask, I think that, you know, but you can't stay night after night. We're talking about places to stay. Um, long term. Long term. Yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. really where we're getting at is long term. Yeah. And maybe it might be wise. Well, I guess that would be the pop up camper. I mean, if it's long term and if they were clean, maybe that wouldn't be such a big deal. I actually like um, when I was younger, we had a pop up. I did um, too. Trailer. Oh, they were fun. I yeah. liked them. Yeah. That's that a, would be fun. I graduated from a tent with my yeah. two young sons a yeah. long time ago to a yeah. pop up. And, yeah. Uh, That's a fun. It was nice. Yeah. Well, what about church parking lots? I've oh, heard about this. That's a that biggie. It's, it's going on. It's actually, it's going on. And I would love to see this expanded to where you can stay there. You can just stay there. I mean, why not? A lot of us live in the city. In fact, in America, I know that uh, Gail, um, hey Gail, in Australia, you said that you didn't, you know, you don't think it's right that people would be nomads in, in the city. I think in Australia, there's only a few cities, right? I, well, yeah. I think that's true. I think I'm that's true. I'm sure Gail true. will set us straight on right. that. But. but in America, there's cities everywhere. When you go, I mean, our land is so in vast and city upon city that a lot of us, um, I advocate city life because this is where it's at in, for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to boondock. They just don't. They don't want to be out in the wild. They want to be a lot of single females, older. We love the city life. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why we can as long as we're, you know, yeah. There's places to go. Now, the, yes. uh, there is a, a church group, we understand, uh, or a... a uh, uh, anyway, it's the United Methodist Church. Yes. We understand that many of the United Methodist Churches have set up something yes. where uh, folks can be there from, what is it, 6 p.m. in the evening till 7 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. I mean, just think of how many church parking lots... Other than the yeah. the uh, uh, the ushers committee might meet uh, once every six months, the altar guild might meet once a month, the choir meets it, once 
Wednesday night? Oh, I interrupted you, sorry. <laughs> the, the choir meets one night every week, and there's only, you know, it's most yeah. church choirs are not huge. Yeah. So you've got eight to ten automobiles in the parking lot. Right. Why not use those big parking yeah. lots for good? Yep. Um, exactly. And and again, if people behave themselves, picked up after themselves, pack it in, pack it out, call it what you will. I think there's all of that pavement that's already marked off for parking. Why not utilize it? And it's first so that people um, who live in their vehicles can get some consistent sleep and safe. And I do believe I did read that they do have a security guard that patrols. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then if they're if they're going to be drug dealers <laughs> or they're going to be druggies or drunks and play loud music, they will be asked to leave and not come sure. back probably. I'm not sure if they had that system going on. Yeah. Yeah. And then during the day, they can do like what we do. We go to parks. Or yeah. We go do what we want to do during the day. Do your shopping, whatever you need to but do. It's nice to have some place to go just to feel safe parking at night. Right. That's where right. a lot of the fear comes in from a nomads is that, you know, where am I going to park at night? Where am I going to park? Yeah. So I think that this is uh, another idea, parking lots. Thank you, Felicity, for that. Number five. I'm sorry? Number five. Huh? Number five. <laughs> All right. High five. Number five. All there right. There we go. <laughs> Obviously, as as a number of you mentioned, that you yes. would donate to a GoFundMe yes. program for some of the people that we mentioned yes. on our last video. Yeah. And that is so wonderful that... Yeah. People spoke up and said they're willing to donate. That I know just shows you what kind of a group we've got together yeah. here. Um, but that is, you know, the first thing you have to do is find people that we like the ones. And yeah. we didn't do this so that you'd want to start a GoFundMe program for people that we yes. know. Uh, although that could happen. Well, we. I'd like to, a lot of you said that you'd like to help that one fella who's um right. has such a low social security because he immigrated here so we could definitely we'll let you know i think like our this channel and the, with the facebook group we could get this we could get him something going I bet. I bet. yeah make sure that his we'll have can to get contact the done. Uh, friend of ours that yes. is in contact with mm -hmm. him more often yes. and ask him first yes. of all you have to have his permission Right, and then I would think, I, we don't know the ins and outs, I've never done a GoFundMe for somebody else, but um, I think that um, as long as I'm the, if we're the executor of this GoFundMe, we can make sure that when we give him, we can have an agreement or something that he yeah. uses this yeah. for what, for like a, a van, we'll find out what he needs the most, and then we can get something going right. for him, right. and we'll let you know what he needs. But yeah, GoFundMe I think is a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and one, go ahead. And if we uh, find out that that we have his permission to get something like that yeah. started, we'll let you know and broadcast it both here on yes. the YouTube channel and on uh, yeah. Minnie Van Lee's Facebook group, and see what we can do to right. help uh, an individual at least. And mm -hmm. you know there are what four or five other ideas that we've had and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I hope it gets your wheels turning a little bit and, and uh, maybe there'll even be more suggestions coming in. Now we are in contact very close with another Facebook group, um, Gypsy Minstrel. Right. With Marcus. Yes. So we can actually, his group, could get something started too and do a GoFundMe because we can't do like five GoFundMe's. Right. Well, we yeah. can do one and then we can even get um, a couple more that we know yeah. of the, and say, hey, the, let's get some GoFundMe's going. The Gypsy min Minstrel Caravan. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, hey, Marco. Hey. <laughs> and Dana too. Dana. I you mean, she's, she's, she's just as important. Um, in fact, we were out to lunch and he he um, texted me and we were sending pictures we were at a restaurant he was at a restaurant with dana we we're like hey you know <laughs> it was funny so yeah we can get uh the gofundme's going and i will tell you that 
the whole concept of the GoFundMe is helping one person because humans studies show humans if they say let's help this whole big group it's too overwhelming and they just throw their hands up in the air that's why if you see like these christian funds for like when they go to different countries and can you help this person his name is ben and he wants right. to go to school yeah. and we can help him with his books and people give to it because like let's help this ben let's help him but if you say, let's help all these poor kids in this village, people go, wow, I don't know. Can't do it. Can't Too do much. it. So yeah. when you can help one person, it really can make a difference. Yeah. Yes, it that, really can. So, that would be wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed all of these. Uh, these are ideas. We just need, some of them are in place, like parking lots and church parking lots and and um, the Escapees Club. And the, 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 the format is already there. You know, it's already been discovered and it's been laid out the plans. We just have to take it and replicate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And the boarding house is already there. Um, maybe no, more boarding houses need to be built. And, the, and not just senior centers. I mean, but actual boarding houses. There are a lot of people who are homeless, not just seniors. They've lost their job through COVID or they just... You know, uh, families lost their businesses, restaurants, and I mean, my family mechanic, we always called him, I was called him, he was my family mechanic. Mm -hmm. Because of, he was so disgusted with all of the things going on with COVID, he shut his whole business down. Yeah. He did. And uh, there's not just restaurants that shut down. So many people, it's like, I can't deal with all of these. And they were putting so many demands on it. You had to put all this and you had to, he just said, I give up. Yeah. You know, and so a lot of people gave up, but uh, these are really great ideas. So I want to um, encourage everybody, I do mention this every time, encourage everybody to stay as healthy as you can and to stay on top of your health, stay healthy, um, be exercising, and don't let your health go because if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. You really don't. And then, you know, everything starts going down. You can't work. You can't do extra work. Um, so um, if you want, I've got my exercises on minivanlee.com, minivan-lee.com, minivan.org. Oh, you name it. I got them all. <laughs> so go there. And I've got neck gaiters. I've got arm gaiters. And I have my exercise videos. So um, hope you enjoyed this series. This is the last one. And if you have any more ideas, leave down in yeah. comments and help us with some new ideas of what you want to learn about or hear about from us. Sure. There you go. There you go. All right. So thank you, folks, for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit. Uh, I was amazed at the number of comments we got yes. about uh, it's so good to raise these things. It's not all uh, always fun and games. Yeah, it isn't uh, out here. And uh, it's good to talk about these things. There are real people that are really in need of help. And uh, I think we can we can do some things to, to really help those folks. So thank right. you very much, everyone. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye.